Hello, this is Yaakov Fein. Let's keep reading the book TypeScript quickly, lesson number 12. We are opening chapter 3 and going back to classes. This time we'll talk about inheritance. TypeScript classes, how they inherit from each other. First of all, the keyword class and the keyword extend were introduced in JavaScript, in ECMAScript 6 actually. So by the word extend, we can inherit a class from another one. Uh, we'll see how, how this works. And TypeScript, of course, uh, supports, the, supports the inheritance as well. So uh, in the real world, each person inherits something from their parents, right? So you inherit something from your pop and from your mom. And uh, in the object oriented programming, as well in languages that support it. JavaScript was always object-oriented uh, language. Uh, the inheritance in there was implemented a bit differently. They have so-called prototypal inheritance when the objects can be inherited um, uh, during the runtime. You don't have to say in the beginning who is coming from who. In other languages, like Java, for example, inheritance is implemented differently. There is something called class as an entity. Instance in Java or C Sharp and uh, class are different. In, in Java, a class is like a blueprint. You, create, you describe a blueprint and based on that blueprint you create instances of uh, this class. A blueprint, a blueprint lives separate life and instances live separate life. And you can, in the, blue, in the blueprint, you can say that I have a class person and I also have a class employee, and employee extends person. In JavaScript, it was done differently. There is a special property called prototype, and uh, I'll show you a little example of that. For now, just remember that class and extends are keywords that were introduced in um, ECMAScript 6, and JavaScript uh, supports them now. Now let's take a look at the, at the simple example. I'm in the TypeScript lang.org in the playground. On the left hand side, as usual, we see the TypeScript version of the code. On the right, compiled JavaScript version. So I have class person with three property, first name, last name, age, and it has a method say hello in there. Right? A method say hello. It returns a string concatenating my name is first name and last name. Fine, no rocket science. Then we declare a class employee that extends person. By doing that, we say that the class employee should have all the properties and maybe methods that exist in a superclass. Who is a superclass? The ancestor person in this case. And you can also define something else in there in the class employee. In this case, I add a new property department in the class employee. And then I, cre I create an instance of new employee just like that. I want you to note that neither class person nor class employee, at least this version, have constructors. We'll talk about constructors a bit later. But for now, these are very simple classes. So what I can do, actually, as a matter of fact, let me hit control space. See, over here, I declared a constant uh, employee and I created an instance of the employee object. So I want to sh you to see that this ample e variable knows everything declared, all public members at least, uh, declared in the class person, in the superclass, and also what is de declared in the class employee. Take a look. See. It prompts me, I hit control space after dot on line 17. It prompts me that these things are available for me, all these properties plus the method say hello. Let me initialize this uh, a couple of properties over here. It's, again, it doesn't have a constructor, so I have to do it manually. Let me do first name is equal Mary, right? Who else? Uh, then employee. Mm, last name, 
is equal Smith. Right? All right. Now let's let's try to run this example, run this program. If I want to I want to invoke the method say hello and I expect it to print something like my name is Mary Smith. So let's do this. I'll do console log uh, ample dot say hello. Alrighty. Done. Run. And it prints my name is Mary Smith, as expected. Beautiful. But once again, mm, under the hood, under the hood, uh, JavaScript implements prototypal inheritance when objects, dependencies, and relations are specified during the runtime. And it remains the same. The keyword class and the keyword extends are syntax sugar. Which means what? Which means I can easily break this inheritance and uh, change the thing, uh, change the way things works. For example, I can just write over here class. I'm not saying it's a good idea. I'm not. I'm just trying to play a bad guy who can do this anyway. Just to show you that TypeScript doesn't give you any protection against uh, using prototypal inheritance. So, for example, my class, a person. Uh, person dot every object in JavaScript has this property prototype, right? And I want to redefine say hello. Uh, I want it to be a function, um, function, and it'll do return a goodbye. Mm, not like this, goodbye, right? Look at this. I'm Technically, I'm breaking the code. Let me run the example. See, it prints goodbye. So even though it looks like I declare a class person with this method, say hello, and somewhere separately I decided to use prototype, I, I still can. So just, just know that uh, inheritance in TypeScript with the keyword class and the keyword extends uh, is not exactly 100% the same as it would be in Java. The same applies to JavaScript as well in your uh, versions. Okay, one more thing I wanted to, to I want you to see. Let's try to define a constructor in this class. Uh, first of all, it's not convenient, right? I cr I had to create a new instance of the class, and then I had to go and manually initialize its properties. So let's let's do this. Let's create a constructor. I, don't, I will not even, well, I can keep them. I can keep these properties, but uh, you know that I can just use uh, special qualifiers with constructor arguments. I already explained it to you in the, one of the previous lessons and uh, say that I want these properties. Let's, let's do first the old way constructor. And I want uh, this class person to be, I want this object person to be able to be created with immediate initialization of the properties. So I will do constructor, uh, what do we want, first name, first name, first name, which is a string, uh, last name, um, which is a string, and age, which is a number. And again, the boring way to do this constructor is to say something like this. This dot last name is equal last name. Uh, uh, this, we don't, we don't like it, but let's try it this way first, the long way. Uh, first name, mm, mm, sorry, first name is equal the argument, uh, the argument first name, uh, name, right? And finally, this uh, dot age is equal is equal age, uh, the argument of the constructor. Why is a mistake? La uh, first missing t. All right, it caught it. See right away. All right. Anyway, so this is this part is done. So now I should be able, there is a little problem though, but technically I should be able to 
instantiate this employee. Now it tells me that uh, arguments are missing, right? So let me do this. I will give, what is the first argument? Mm. What was the first argument? Uh, first name, right? So Mary Smith and uh, in quotes. And uh, how old is Mary? She is 29, young girl. So now I don't need this anymore. And let me see if I can run it. If I can run this example, run. Just it still says goodbye. I don't want this anymore. I, I want to get rid of it. Run. My name is Mary Smith, which is correct, right there. All right, so far so good. So what do we what do we have? We have a situation when the superclass has a constructor, and uh, the subclass doesn't. As a matter of fact, let's do this. Uh, uh, let's do this uh, shorter notation. Let's get rid of this uh, useless uh, this dot and so on. Uh, let's do this. I will say public. Public. And uh, this guy is public. Last name. And this guy is private. Uh, property age is declared, but it's very never read. Uh, that's okay. Let me get rid of this of these things. I don't need them anymore, because because just by the fact that I am using these uh, qualifiers such as public or private, it knows that I want to create the properties with this with similar name. So I don't need to write this that first name is equal first name and stuff like this. So far so good. Let me run this example again. It works the same exact way as before. The code is shorter. Now, what if a subclass also has a constructor? Let's say that the subclass uh, will have a similar constructor, but uh, we see we added the new property department, right? So let's do this. I'll get rid of this department. And what I will do, I will just say that it has an extra, pro uh, extra property uh, say public department of type string for example something like this right N now uh, let's say I will pass the department uh, for accounting all right still it doesn't like something right and what does what it's not liked see now we have a situation when a superclass has its constructor and a subclass has a constructor. See, this is a superclass's constructor. It expects three arguments. And this is a subclass's constructor. It expects four arguments. So we have a situation. What is wrong with this? The thing is that if a superclass has a constructor, mm, it needs to be invoked. Constructors are used to construct, to create instances, right? So by the fact uh, that we said that the subclass is also a constructor, has a constructor, we, oh, there is one thing that is missing. Now we need to explicitly invoke the constructor of the superclass as well. We need to say, I know that the employee is a subclass of the constructor. I know that the superclass person has its own constructor and it needs it to know how to construct the superclass. So what do you do is you invoke this special function called super. This function, if I mean, is with this name, it has to be invoked as a first line in the constructor of the subclass, right? And what we will do, we will pass over first name from the subclass, last name from the uh, subclass that, and the age to the superclasses constructor. It still doesn't like something, but let's, let's take care of this a bit later. So what do we have? I'm saying when somebody will create an instance of the class employee, class employee, uh, 
yeah, I know why it doesn't like it. I know. So, see, the subclass has already subclass uh, has a constructor that also uses all these qualifiers, such as public or uh, private or protected. It says it understands that the superclass already has them, so there is no need for these guys to redefine these properties, uh, these uh, three arguments as properties of the class. Department is a different story. It was not declared in the superclass, so that's fine. All right, so what do we say? We say when somebody will create an instance of employee, uh, this uh, somebody or our script will get four values, right? And we say, first thing, you need to take these uh, three values and give it to the constructor of the superclass so it knows how to properly build the class person. So now this, uh, this code should work fine, run. My name is Mary Smith. So if if I wanted, I I I, uh, I could I could uh, do the console uh, log. I could I could print the department of this employee, of course, uh, department. Something like this. Console run. See, my name is Mary Smith Accounting. So to to sum it up, we have a class person. A class can extend another class. Employee extends person. If uh, only the superclass has a constructor, no need to worry about, the, about it in the subclass. It will use the superclass's constructor and uh, it'll build the subclass as well by creating a special hidden default constructor. If both classes, superclass and the subclass, have their own constructor, it's your responsibility to use a special function, super, and pass to the constructor of the superclass all the parameters that it needs. And this concludes this lesson.